Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time. Today I want to give you my top 10 hints for indoor flying with the DJI Phantom 4. And while you are now going to enjoy my episode and while you are going to leave a thumb up hopefully and while you're going to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes, you can enjoy a piece of film that I just filmed within, I don't know, 30 minutes in this creepy indoor location. Enjoy it, stay tuned, fly safe. My first indoor flying hint is actually super basic. Don't fly indoors if you don't have to. Use a DJI Osmo instead if it's only about their super smooth movement or use a ladder if it's about the height only. Only use uh, the DJI Phantom if you for example have to fly outside a window and then have to raise height within one shot and um, if that is a shot you can't capture with any other camera. So for safety purposes only fly indoors if you have to. My second hint is another safety hint. Don't ever fly with carbon fiber props. Use the plastic standard props only. The carbon fiber props can easily damage, I don't know, a property or objects and of course they can harm people as well. If they cut through flesh they can easily cause very very bad woundings. That is why I only use the uh, plastic standard propellers made by DJI. For flying indoors it is a lot safer and highly recommended. My third hint for indoor flying is to always fly with the prop guards installed to the Phantom. The prop guards add a lot of safety to the Phantom. Only take a look at those test bumps that I recorded when I hit the walls and uh, you can see that the Phantom does not crash even if you slightly, I don't know, um, bump into a wall or into an obstacle. They are very very helpful especially if you are a beginner but even I as a pro use the prop guards all the time. A product link, by the way, can be found in the video description right below. And um, you should note one thing, that if you're using the prop guards with the DJI Phantom 4, the obstacle sensing system gets disabled. But being honest, indoors we don't need the obstacle sensing system. As for example, when flying through here, um, the, the, the obstacle sensors would already stop me. Even if I would have to pass um, that one uh, metal structure thing here and um, they would stop me and they would say there is an, uh, an, an obstacle detected. So um, indoors we don't need the obstacle sensors but we need the prop guards. My fourth hint can really save your Phantom indoors. It is super important to change one setting. Let's right now take a look at the iPad monitor. With the copter running in the background we right now want to tap at the quadcopter looking alike symbol at the top and that opens up the MC settings menu, the main controller settings menu. In here we scroll down until we reach the advanced settings. We tap at advanced settings and in here we want to change the remote controller signal lost from return to home 
to hover. Because indoors it can easily happen that you are having a signal loss, not because of the distance, but because there might be interference, there might be a Wi-Fi, there might be iron. For example, in here, that's, there, there's lots of iron surrounding me. There might be interference at all times, and if something happens, we don't want the Phantom to raise its height and return home, because once it raises the height, it probably raises right into the ceiling. So avoid that and set the remote controller signal lost to hover always when flying indoors. Right now, let's focus on some of the flight modes of the Phantom. We have the P, S and A mode on the remote controller and the P mode is the normal standard flight mode. The S mode is the sport mode that we never ever want to touch when flying indoors because it's way too fast. And finally, we have the A mode, the attitude mode. We'll talk about that later. When should one use the P mode? I am, for example, standing inside this glass house and my Phantom is always connected to 10 plus satellites when being in here, no problem which means that I can use the P mode just as I normally would outdoors and uh, the GPS and the GLONASS will hold my Phantom's position quite safely. I then recommend using the P mode. It is pretty simple. If you are flying, for example, inside a church or inside a, a house with, I don't know, a ceiling above your head that is thicker than glass above my head and you're not connected with 10 plus satellites at all times, the Phantom will try to then use the VPS, the vision positioning system, the sensors down here, sonar and camera, both on the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4. Um, actually, I do not recommend using those sensors. Why? The first problem is that those sensors only work until a certain height. On the Phantom 3 series, that was up to 3 meters and on the Phantom 4, up to 10 meters. Even though 10 meters should be fine, most of the time, there are a few other cons. First of all, the system does only work when there is enough surrounding light around you. So it does not work if it's dark inside. Next to that, the Phantom needs clear pattern, ground pattern, to be able to track the position, to be able to hold the position above the ground steadily. And um, for example, in here, the VPS wouldn't be working quite nicely. As we can see, the ground is brownish only, no clear pattern no real tracking points on the ground, which would make the cameras, uh, I wouldn't want to say senseless, but it wouldn't be working quite nicely. For example, if you're flying over water outdoors, the Phantom might just drift away a little bit because the uh, Phantom's uh, uh, obstacle sensors down here, they cannot really track water. So I do not recommend using those. There is another reason. If you're, for example, flying above a table and you then fly over the edge, the Phantom might drop the height a little bit only a few centimeters, but that can already cause some trouble. In the worst case, that is because the Phantom's uh, VPS sensors think, okay, I'm, we are 30 centimeters above the ground, and then they recognize, oh, we are a lot too high, and then they try to um, lower the altitude of the Phantom. It is a little weird, even though the Phantom, of course, recognizes very fast, okay, there was a step only, and, um, but still I do not recommend using the VPS sensors. Only use the P mode if the copter is connected to at least 10 satellites at all times. If your copter is not steadily connected to at least 10 satellites, we want to switch over to the ATTI mode to prevent any problems from happening. For example, there could be a GPS kick in. For example, you're not having GPS at the one second and then the GPS module switches back on and the Phantom corrects its position and uh, that could cause you to crash into something. So if you're not all the time connected to at least 10 satellites, switch over to A mode, the ATTI mode, the attitude mode. By the way, there is a whole tutorial of mine explaining everything and walking you through the very first steps within the A mode. You can click it right now. A link can be found in the video description as well because I cannot capture that entire topic in here right now as well. So check it out, it's pretty exciting. And um, if you're using the A mode indoors, keep in mind that once you let go of the sticks after flying forward, you let go of the sticks, the Phantom won't just stop and hover as it would within the GPS based mode, but it will glide and then come to a stop a few meters after. And there could be a wall or something, an object, 
a person standing that could really harm someone. So only keep in mind that when using the ATTI mode, um, you have to uh, uh, pull the brakes yourself, so you have to power back a little and um, pay some more attention to open windows, because if there is a wind gust coming in, inside the room that might hit the Phantom and the Phantom might drift away with it, but actually flying ATTI indoors is pretty, pretty safe. And I was recording the one clip um, half within the GPS mode and half within the ATTI mode only, I don't know, to practice ATTI. You can't practice it enough and um, you're always going to end up as a better pilot. And it's pretty safe indoors. So if you're not connected to at least 10 satellites all the time, use the ATTI mode over the P mode. When I was in the United States of America, I always kept one thing in mind, and that was the little writing inside um, the mirrors of the cars. Objects might be closer than they appear, and objects are always closer than they appear when it comes to phantom flying. So keep in mind that once you are flying closer to an object, and you think you might be, I don't know, still half a meter away, and it looks quite nicely on your monitor, the camera is a wide angle camera. So keep that in mind. You might already be very, very, very close to the object. So always pay attention to that. Keep in mind that your camera has a wide angle lens and uh, take a look at the Phantom yourself. Don't only watch the uh, monitor. Being honest, when flying indoors and I'm uh, the single operator setup, and by the way, you can only fly the Phantom within uh, the, the single operator setup. I pay more attention to the copter even than to the live view monitor. I then review the stuff after that and um, I pay a lot of attention to the copter while it flies around so it doesn't crash into anybody or anyone or anything or like that. You got me, right? Never ever fly too close towards the ceiling because if you do so, the Phantom might suck itself into the ceiling. That can really happen as the propellers they suck the air from above down to push the Phantom up in flight. That is what happens, basically. And um, if you're flying too close towards the ceiling um, and have enough power, the Phantom might suck itself up to the wall and we don't want that to happen because if you then let go, the Phantom might just drop and fall. So always have, I don't know, half a meter, if possible, space between the Phantom and the ceiling and you'll be good to go. For a better and safer orientation, you should always fly within the course lock mode when flying indoors. Being honest, the course lock mode is my very, very favorite mode over the POI and over the waypoints. The course lock is the film mode and it is the safety mode when flying indoors, which means that, for example, if you rotate the copter, the front, if I push the sticks to the front, the front would now be over here. And if I get confused indoors, that could easily cause a crash to happen. And with the course lock activated, if I set the front to be over there and I rotate the copter, the front will still be there. Which means I can create very, very cool shots with the Phantom when flying. And if I once get into trouble and um, I rotate the copter wrongly, I probably won't crash into anything. It's pretty safe. There is, of course, another tutorial of mine explaining the course lock mode in detail. Check it out right now. A link, again, can be found in the video description. As always, always have the course lock mode enabled when flying indoors, always make sure you stand behind the Phantom, set a course lock, and you'll be good to go. My final hint is about common sense only. Keep in mind that uh, there might be iron structures inside your house or building or wherever you're filming, that there might be a Wi-Fi router, that there might be electronics or other things that interfere with the Phantom. So if you're having any transmission delays or complete interruptions, don't get crazy. And if you are having a complete signal loss, don't get crazy. You have set your copter to hover in air. Nothing is going to happen that way. Don't make yourself crazy about compass arrows. And keep in mind that the Phantom 4 has a dual compass. And even though there is a lot of iron in here and I had transmission problems, the compass was always safe. So the Phantom 4 is a pretty safe machine by now. And um, next to that, keep in mind to never ever fly too fast towards uh, people or animals that way you can save some money because you don't have to pay for the hospital cost and fees It is pretty simple actually if you use common sense. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial of mine Feel free to leave a thumb up feel free to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes again Feel free to support my work tomstechtime.com slash donate leave a PayPal donation that way I can keep up the work and next to that if you want to furthermore um, support my work check out tomstechtime.com slash deals and always purchase your gear through my link. That way I get a small commission. You won't have to pay a dime more. It is pretty simple and I get a small commission and can 
buy new phantoms and stuff and review them for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. This was Tom from TDT Tom's Tag Time over and out. Stay tuned, fly safe. You guys know I really need something to drink. It's so dry in here. Bye-bye. <laughs>